Hello everybody, if there's anybody there, and welcome to this week's Easy 11 Plus live lesson from me and a very naughty cat. Look how naughty he's looking, he's always looking for something new naughty to do. Uh, Grigri's fur is looking great, I'm on a crazy hair day, I thought I'd leave it as it is, because why not have a little bit of craziness on a Tuesday evening in summer? Uh, today we're going to be looking at some descriptive writing, let me pull the microphone a bit nearer, with a uh, task from my book. Um, RSL Creative Writing Book One. Uh, you go out and buy it in all good online bookshops and some actual ones. Um, anyway, now let's have, have enough of the music, enough of the music in the background. Right, let us get cracking. Don't forget that you can um, send me a piece of your writing for completely free feedback with little videos like this and voice notes all down your work. If you want to find out more about that, just Google 11 plus lifeline and there's a banner at the top of the screen that tells me how you can send me your work for free to try out my marking service. Um, and all the information is there. I've just just now finished marking three bits of work that uh, people sent me through that offer. So it's live, it's going, and lots of people are benefiting from it. Um, Sri Harry says, hurry up Robert and like. I'm not quite sure what that instruction means, uh, but I like the suggestion that people should click like, uh, please do. Uh, and please consider joining 11 Plus Lifeline if you want to have a massive head start in your 11 Plus preparation. And don't forget to like the video, I just said that. Subscribe, you can even join if you want to become a member of the channel. Um, Kartik says, is this a long lesson? Uh, no, not really, it'll only be about three hours. Um, Ni nee says, this is my first live video, Mr. Lomax, just for you, Ni. Nee, I'm gonna say that the lesson will not be anything like three hours. Um, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Um, I'll try and keep it to, you know, 40 minutes or so if I can. Okay, fantastic to have you. Wow, here at FAM says, I have your book. Uh, what book? This book? Fantastic. Wonderful that you have it. There are two more in the series. Right, enough waffle for me. Let's get started. So the task we're working on today is this. Um, so um, this photograph shows a house after the first snowfall of winter. Imagine that you wake up inside this house and open the window. Describe what happens and what you see, conveying some of your thoughts and emotions. So what happens? So we're not talking about a big story. We're talking about a short description. That's what we're aiming for here. But there should be some events in it, not aliens landing, but a little bit of direction, a little bit of movement. And we need some thoughts and emotions. OK, you don't necessarily need to say, I thought this, I felt this but you do need to convey emotions and convey thought processes through how you write. Use the present tense. Now that is the kind of detail that if it appears in a question, um, about you know, a third of people will completely miss it and write in the past tense. Don't do that, pay attention to these things. Not following the instructions is an easy way to lose marks. Your work should fit within the writing space provided. Now, if you've got the worksheet for these lessons, the worksheet is always linked in the video description and I send it out to my mailing list in advance to get into my mailing list with the free resources, free papers and videos page on my website and sign up for the mailing list. And then you'll get the worksheet in advance. Um, anyway, the worksheet's there and it's got writing space in it. Uh, today, I'm just gonna be writing into a Word document so you don't have to endure my handwriting. I'm gonna be typing. Okay. Um, so here we are, uh, oh, useful note to myself there at the top of the page. Um, definitely top writing advice. Okay, so let's go back to the task and consider the picture for a bit. This photograph shows a house after the first snowfall of winter. Now the starting point with a task like this is not to think I'm going to write about X, Y, and Z. It's to look at the picture and just come up with some ideas. So what do I notice? There's a lot of snow. You can't see anything of this part of the house except for the windows and the vague outline of, you know, whatever you'd call them, the gables or something above them. Um, but it's pretty much a mound of snow. We can see that the um, outer part of the windows is a kind of maroon colour and the window frames themselves are a kind of sort of sandy orange. I don't know quite what the technical term for that would be. Maybe someone could help me in the comments. We can see that the sun is kind of up there to the side shining down from quite high up, but uh, uh, quite, a, uh, quite an acute angle. Oh dear, Grigri's having a good scratch under the desk. Sorry if that's coming from the microphone. Um, yeah, we can see this big pile of snow above the windows. That could fall off. That could be a plot point. Okay, there's enough to go with here, I think. We can refer back to it. But start by just having those general thoughts about the picture. 
Right, okay. So we need to write in the present tense. In fact, no, let's look at the task one more time. Sorry, I'm being very disorganized here. Um, imagine that you wake up inside this house and open the window. Right. So we don't need to describe the actual waking up. The key thing is that we're describing a situation in someone, which someone opens a window having just opened up. Ni says that ni is pronounced ni. Okay, so I apologize for calling you ni, ni. No, I apologize for calling you ni, 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 ni. Okay. Um, pronouncing ni, ni is a little bit like pronouncing Robert as wrought or something, I suppose. Very confusing, very confusing. Um, too much for my elderly brain. Um, okay, so let's get cracking. Write any rubbish and pretend that it's good. That is the motto, pretty much, of my Easy 11 Plus live lessons. Right, that's established. Let's get going. So you've woken up. Now, if you're fully alert and, uh, by the way, I haven't, apart from, I spent about 30 seconds thinking about this just before I went on air. So I really am making this up as I go along. Um, so you'll see the creative process or what passes for it live. So if I had someone who's full of energy and they're wide awake, then they would immediately see what's happening. And that would be a bit boring. So a more interesting scenario would be somebody who's just woken up and they're tired, they're kind of still stuck in their sleep, maybe they're still half in their dreams, their eyes are a bit bleary, and it takes them a while to work out what's going on. That's a more interesting scenario, I think. Now, this is only a short description, so I don't want to waste time describing waking up. So, um, um, yeah. Oh, and it needs to be in the first person, so I. I believe that was in the instructions. So, bleary-eyed. Bleary-eyed, I reached a hand towards the latch. Okay, I like short, simple sentences, but there's still detail in this that helps us. So the latch, so it's not like a big knob around, it's just a latch, um, so it fits with the kind of old-fashioned window. Bleary-eyed, so we got this idea that, um, um, yeah, sort of like that. Can't quite see, maybe the sort of sleep crusted in their eyes. I reached a hand towards, so it's not a definite motion like taking hold of it. It's a rather kind of hesitant, tired motion, like reaching out towards it. Oh, there's the camera. Mm. Um, okay. Um, now, can we make this a little bit stronger? This idea they're still kind of in their dreams. Bleary eyed and half, oh, good word, stupefied by sleep. Now, sometimes I see a word like this and I think, hmm, I spelt it right, so I think it could be like that. No, so now I know I've spelt it correctly. So trying out can be a good way to be sure of your spellings. Bleary eyed and half stupefied by sleep, I reached a hand towards the latch. Okay, now it's really, really cold outside because the snow hasn't melted off yet. So the first impression as the window loosens might be a gust of cold air. Um, as the window opened, um, as the window opened a crack, um, a, a gust of air, but it's only open a crack, a, a knife edge of, um, of, of icy air made me wince because that's what you might do if you, it's a nice cozy house you push the window and suddenly woo, oh that's cold oh. a knife edge of icy air made me wince I'm already implying some feelings some emotions which is what the task wants um, so, some people are throwing with ideas I can't see everything because I need to keep moving but I like some of these um, um, a cascade of snow came sprinkling down. Yes, but we want to save that because at that point they'll know it's snow. So let's keep the confusion for a bit longer. Uh, Sam, Sam, Sam DK maybe says, an experience with blowiness. My jaw dropped as I saw a river of snow flow to the window. So I love the idea of the river of snow, but again, let's hold off on them knowing that this is snow. Um, Raw says, because it's so boring. Yep, that's the name of the game. Um, Leo says, you're writing in the wrong tent. Leo, you are my savior. You're my savior. I spoke about this. Okay. I reach a hand towards the lack, latch. As the window opens a crack, a knife edge of air 
makes me wince. Ah, that's my wife coming home, so I'm just gonna close the office door, at which point I will start cooking under these lights. As the window opens the crack, a knife edge of air makes me wince. Leo, you are my savior. Thank you so much for pointing that out. Um, barely a minute went by from me saying that that was really important to doing something different. Um, I could say, well, I'm under the pressure of doing a live screen, stream, but you'll be under the pressure of doing an exam, which is just the same. So um, I can't really excuse myself there. Okay, I reach your hand towards that. A, cra a knife edge of icy air makes me wince. Okay, let's keep this moving. I, I push the window, I wish, push the window further. Um, um, I push the window third, nice and simple. Um, with a soft thud, so now we're bringing sound in, it jams against something solid. So what have we got here? We've, have we described anything that the character sees? No. Now we're going to because the question asks us to describe what they see. But we make this much more interesting, I think, I hope, if we bring in a range of senses to really take the reader into the experience. So we've got the, the kind of feeling of being blurry-eyed blurry and stupefied. That doesn't really fit under the list of five senses, but the list of five senses is made up anyway. Um, we've got the feeling of the air. We've got the sound and then the feeling of it striking something. So this is really an all-round sensory experience. It's like VR, people. Okay, with a soft thud, it jams against something solid. Um, I pause for a moment. Um, I can't see the keyboard now. Trying to collect my thoughts. I'm on this kind of in. I'm on this kind of semi-touch type. As like once I got started, I can touch type, but I have to see the keys when I start, or I just write random nonsense. Well, I'm writing not random nonsense, nonsense anyway, but I write more random nonsense. Um, I pause for a moment, trying to collect my thoughts. Um, um, okay. Um, I pause for a minute, trying to trying to get my thoughts. Um, oh, my hand still on the latch. So I'm really placing the person in the environment here where they are. Um, now, what I've just done here is I've started a new paragraph. I didn't mention that. And the reason I've done that is simply to give a moment for the character to be puzzled and for the reader to relate to their puzzlement. With a soft thud that jams against something solid, that's not normal, the window should open. But the person's tired and confused, so they're not quite sure what's going on. So we give them a second to think what's going on. And we do that by starting a new paragraph. I pause for a moment, trying to collect my thoughts. My hand's still on the latch. Um, I push the window again. And, and now on to somebody's idea, whoever suggested this. But I'm not going to say that it's snow and a sprinkle of something cold scatters across the back of my hand. Now what I'm saying here is very, very simple. There's nothing complex here. There are no extravagant literary techniques, but I'm just creating an experience that the reader can identify with. And I'm, part, I'm doing that with senses, so the feeling of something cold, but I'm also doing it with detail. Not detail saying like saying, I reached into my pocket and pulled out my Samsung Z 79 but I it was the back of my hand so you can imagine what angle the hand is at as it's on the latch and you can picture your hand being there it's that kind of thing a sprinkle of something cold scatters across the back of my hand okay now there's a bit of a problem crept in can you see it I've repeated the word hand and that's pretty clunky we don't want to do that because the reader will hear hand 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 so, um, my finger's still on the latch. And now we've got rid of the repetition. So that's the kind of thing that you always want to look out for. And a sprinkle of something cold scatters across the back of my hand. I shove, um, um, I shove some more 
and then again. And the glass rattles angrily. Okay, what's the technique there? Um, the technique is... Can anyone get the comment in quickly enough? Uh, the comments are coming in quite slowly. I guess it's a, a, a software or internet issue. Uh, but I'm sure you've all written it. It's personification. So I'm making the glass, the, the window, seem as though it's a character in this story. And that kind of take, it takes a one character story and makes it a little bit more interesting, perhaps a little bit more engaging. I shove some more and then again, and the glass rattles angrily. Um, now this person has been bleary eyed and half stupefied by sleep. So what happens if they're still thinking, this is so weird, am I even really awake? Um, it seems, it seems unreal, like, um, like something, um, do, 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 it seems unreal, as though my dreams are still, my weird dreams, I like the word weird, it's my weird is good, good ancient Anglo-Saxon word, as though my weird dreams are still intruding into my reality, as though my weird dreams are, no, as though my weird dreams are still intruding, that does fine. Seems unreal as my weird dreams are still intruding. Um, now I reach a hand through the gap. Um, and it plunges into cold dampness. Snow. Why a one word sentence? Because that's the moment at which this becomes real for our character. And the sudden realization, it becomes more shocking when you express it like that. And you don't want to do this too often, but once in a story, it can be effective. Now I reach a hand through the gap and it plunges into cold dampness, snow. And suddenly there's no question whether it's a dream, it's real. Um, now I could say, what do we want now? Now the task is to describe what they see, so we got to move on and always bear in mind what the actual task is that the examiner set. So we need to push this story into describing what they see outside the window. But there's all this snow in the way blocking the window. Um, um, but now I wonder something. Um, why can't they just see what's outside and see the snow? So the luxury of typing, I'm going to add that in. If you were handwriting, this is a good argument for double spacing so that you've got space to add some extra ideas. Um, I tried to collect my thoughts, my finger's still on the latch. Um, through the glass, nothing. Um, an emptiness of mottled grey. Why do I say grey? Because as I imagine it, as I recall it, when you've got glass piled against a window, especially if it's quite dim inside, then you don't see a kind of pure white, you see a kind of grey. Mottled, because it's kind of patterned with different colours, lighter, darker and so on. So the glass nothing, an emptiness of mottled grey. Of course someone who was awake and alert would immediately know what they were looking at, it's snow piled against a window. But that's why I set this up with the character being bleary-eyed and half-stupefied by sleep. Because it makes sense. Now I reach a hand through the gap and it plunges into cold dampness, okay? Um, um, someone's very keen for me to say the white prestigious snow. That isn't quite the right adjective because prestigious um, means something that has prestige, something that has fame or renown. So it's used, for example, of a, you know, if you go to a famous school that people respect, you might say, I go to a prestigious school. I mean, you wouldn't because you sound really arrogant, but, but that's something you could say. Were you, were you really arrogant? 
Um, and um, yeah, so it doesn't describe a natural phenomenon like snow. Um, anyway, so through the glass and empty as mottled grey. Right, now we're here. So, so we explain why they couldn't see through the glass, which is an important plot point. Now I reach a hand through the gap and it plunges into cold dampness, snow. Um, how do they respond to this? Let's show the character, their feelings. Um, um, I gasp, um, but before all the air has escaped, um, the sound, I need to scroll here, don't I? Yeah. Um, I'm going to make a bit of space here, so that's it. Um, the sound twists itself into a giggle of anticipation. Oh, very nice. Predictive text there. Thank you, Wood. Now reach your hand through the gap and it plunges into cold dampness. Snow. I gasp, but before the air has escaped my mouth, just to be clear, escape my throat, because that's where we make the giggly. So we want to imagine the feeling in the throat. <gasps> a circle kind of... Um, <sighs> The kind of thing I'm imagining. <sighs> no, I sound absolutely crazy, but I can imagine a character doing that and not sounding crazy. They just have to be a little bit, you know, more normal than me. No, I shams the gap and it plunges into cold dampness. Snow. I gasp, but before the arrows escape my throat, the sound twists itself into a giggle of anticipation. Um, now, what I want to do now, we've got to describe what they see, because that's what the task has asked for. So we need to move this along. We need them to push the window open for the snow to fall away and for them to see. So how do we describe them pushing the window before? I push the window again. Um, I push the window further. I push the window again. Oh, yeah, push and push. Um, so let's change this one into shove. So as I glance back, I'm noticing little edits that I need to make, and I make them. Oh, and then we got to shove some more. Hmm, we got push and push. Um, um, okay, I nudge the window again. Let's make this one gentle and then they get annoyed and they shove some more. Yeah, that works. Um, um, placing both palms against the frame, I lean my weight I lean, I lean my body's weight, and now they know what it is, against the heap snow, and now I really push. I haven't said push for a while, so we can get away with it. Oh, I can't firm my mouth. Ugh. I haven't said push for a while. Yeah, so we can get away with this repetition, I think, because it's not really a close repetition. I've started a new paragraph here, by the way. It might not be that obvious, but you can see that this gap is a bit bigger because now we've got a change in focus. Now they're really deciding to push and to look out of here. Placing both arms together, I lean my body's weight against the heap stove, and now I really push. Um, more resistance, and then well, I think there is more resistance. Let's stick to conventional English. There is more resistance. And then with um, a um, and then with a then with a crunch versus a and then with a, and then with a crunch and a rush, so it gives away suddenly it's kind of crunch and then woof the snow goes, and then with a crunch and a rush. The window, the window, the window falls open. And before me, so the obvious thing is the world is white. Um, and before me, the world is white. Okay, world is white, kind of obvious. The world is white. So I want to say like an ocean of white custard, but white custard, I mean, people actually custard is yellow by you're clarifying it as white. You're not really comparing it to custard. Um, 
It's white, like um, like an ocean of. Help me, people. What's white? Like an ocean of bread sauce? Nah, too specific, too niche. Um, and also, it isn't quite white. Any other white liquids? So white sauces that are kind of thick and creamy that you can suggest. Um, help me here, people. Someone said like white paint. Yes, but I want something thick, like a sauce. Um, Aliona says, Robert, you changed before the air has escaped my throat to before it escapes my throat. Before all the air has escaped my throw, throat to before it. Um, the thing is, if I say it, it might sound as I'm talking about the snow. Um, um, I think I'll stick with air. That's, that's my own preference. Um, uh, you're fully entitled to disagree. Um, can anyone else suggest sources? And before me, the world is white like an ocean of... Like an ocean of bread sauce. I'm still looking for something better. Someone help me. I want a white sauce. Yeah, I could say white sauce, but... Um, um, okay, I know what I'm going to say. Bechamel sauce. Is that the right spelling? I think it is. Um, okay, live Googling. Is that how you smell bechamel sauce? If you don't know what bechamel sauce is, look it up. It's something that you use for all kinds of things like pasta sauces and so on. Bechamel. Bechamel sauce. Um, hum, hum, hum. Okay, Googling on my phone right now. Yes, it would have an accent on the E, but we are writing English, not French. Would it have a capital B? Uh, mm, maybe, but I'll do it without. Um, pedants can write in. Um, Oh, someone says ice cream vanilla. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. Um, yes, we have a winner. Mayo. Like an ocean of mayonnaise. Um, and because not all mayonnaise is a white, let's go really specific. Why not? Let's be specific, because everyone knows what Hellman's mayonnaise looks like. And before me, the world is white. And gently heaped, um, and gently heaped in mounds and tufts, like an ocean, um, like an ocean of Hellman's mayonnaise. How about that? Um, placing my palms against the frame, I lean my body's weight against the heaped snow, and now I really push. There is more resistance, and then, with a crunch and a rush, the window falls open, and before me the world is white and gently heaped in mounds and tufts like an ocean of Hellman's mayonnaise. Okay, I think the Hellman's mayonnaise is a little bit silly, but I kind of like it too. So I'll stick with it, because I get to choose. Um, okay. Now, this is a very long sentence, covering a lot of things. And normally when you have a long sentence covering a lot of things, the advice would be to break it into shorter sentences. So why have I left this all as one sentence? Well, there's a simple reason. For this sort of person who has been... So I'm doing cat fur everywhere, so it's really hot here now and I've closed the door. Anyway, um, I could turn the fan on, but then you'd hear it. I might have to do it anyway. You can see from the fact I'm just waffling on that I'm starting to lose concentration with the heat. Um, everything's happening at once for this character. They push the window and suddenly the snow rushes away and the window falls open and they see everything. And they take it all in, all at once. And that's the impression I want to create. It, it should be a massive contrast from the beginning of our piece, where they were kind of stumbling around in relatively short sentences, not quite clear what's going on. And now suddenly it's clear and it's beautiful. Now we could finish here, but let's look at the task and let's think about whether we've covered all the requirements well. Imagine you wake up inside this house and open the window. Done that. Describe what happens. Yeah, we've got a lot of happening. That's fine. And what you see. Okay. Conveying some of your thoughts and emotions. Use the present tense. Thank you, Leo, I think it was, uh, for reminding me of that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Or oh, I'd really embarrass myself. Not that I didn't. Anyway. Uh, you watch your fit with the writing place space provided. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So describe what happens and what you see conveying some of your thoughts and emotions. So we got happens, it's seeing thoughts and emotions. We have covered that, but maybe there's room for a little bit more. We, well, we got thoughts and emotions, it seems unreal, as though my weird dreams are still intruding. I gasp, giggle of anticipation. Yeah, okay, I think we're okay for thoughts and emotions. 
I think because I was so focused on describing different tenses, there might be room for just a touch more of what I see. Um, um, Oh, to the next page, sorry about that. Um, yeah. Do, 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 do. Um, I lean my head outside, no longer caring about the cold. Um, do, 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 do. Ah, dear. To both sides. The house has been reduced to a a mound of white. Um, a mound of white. Oh, we could really do with a simile here, couldn't we? We do a simile, um, like a tea cake. But a tea cake would that be white? No, it wouldn't be tea cake. Um, 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 like some like some hobbit's hole. How about that nice little Tolkien reference? Like a hobbit's hole in winter. Like some hobbit's hole in winter. Um, and then the snow, is it completely... Is there anything to disrupt the purity of the snow? Animal tracks. I bet there'll be, there'll be animals all over it. Um, Across the ground, yeah, across the ground and running, oops, sorry, up the slope of the, up the slope of the building, um, little footprints of animals, little animals, footprints of animals, um, meet and cross each other. Running across the ground. No, we don't need the comma after ground. Across the ground. We're about to finish, by the way. And running up the slope of the building, little footprints of animals meet, meet and cross each other. Um, and run away towards. So towards the horizon. That's a bit far to see the tracks. And run away to the and run away towards the shadow to the towards the shadows of the so let's put this in the country of the distant woods and run away towards the shadow of the distant woods right now let's go through this so I've been reading aloud as I went through. I didn't need to do that because you can see it on the screen. But reading aloud in the way I'm doing is, I think, absolutely essential to writing well, or at least adequately. Um, I'm not going to claim that this is great, but it's definitely adequate. Um, and when you review your work, you definitely want to read it aloud. But I would read aloud as you write in the way that I've done. When you come to an exam, you, of course, can't read aloud or you'll get chucked out. But the point of doing it at this stage is that you learn to hear everything in your head, like speech, so that when you're in an exam hall, you can hear it, even without actually making any sounds with your mouth. Let's go through this, see whether there's anything that really needs editing. Bleary-eyed and half stupefied by sleep, I reach a hand towards the latch. As the window opens a crack, a knife edge of icy air makes me wince. I push the window further. Ah, I don't like that repetition of window. I push some more. That's better. As the window opens a crack, a knife edge of icy air makes me wince. I push some more, push some more. With a soft thud, it jams against something solid. Now we got some and something. I push a little more. So it's a constant process of editing and changing and each thing responding to each other thing in order to make your writing stylish. I push a little more. With a soft thud, it jams against something solid. Okay, but what's it by this point? Because I haven't just referred to the window. The frame jams against something solid. 
So when you edit one thing, you often have to edit others. So that's just the, just the reality. Of course, it's easier with a word processor like this, but this is a really good reason to double space in an exam, to leave a gap between each line, um, as long as you've got infinite writing space, so that you can easily make these edits in the gap in between. I pause for a moment, trying to collect my thoughts, my fingers still on the latch. Through the glass, more cat air, nothing. An emptiness of mottled grey. I nudge the window again and a sprinkle of something cold scatters across the back of my hand. I like that. I shove some more and then again and the glass rattles angrily. It seems unreal, as though my weird dreams are still intruding. Now I reach a hand through the gap and it plunges into cold dampness. Snow. I gasp, but before all the air has escaped my throat, the sound twists itself into a giggle of anticipation. So I'm really engaging with the character's emotions here. Placing both hands against the frame, I lean my body's weight against the heap snow, and now I really push. There is more resistance. Um, and then, with a crunch and a rush, the window falls open. And before me, the world is white and gently heaped in mounds and tufts, like an ocean of Hellman's mayonnaise. I lean my, I lean, oh, I lean my, my head. We don't want that. Right, this is another reason for reading aloud. It's so easy just to read your work and not see things like that. But if you force yourself to read each word aloud, you will hear, I lean my, my head. What? No, I lean my head outside, no longer caring about the cold. To both sides, the house has been reduced to a mound of white, like some hobbit's hole in winter. Across the ground and running up the slope of the building, little footprints of animals meet and cross each other and run away towards, 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 you see. Read aloud so you spot these things and run away towards the shadow of the distant woods. And that's quite a nice place to end. We're leading into the distance as the shadow mystery. Okay, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is my piece of writing. I hope you like it. Um, and if you don't, Oh, well, never mind. There are other YouTube channels out there. Splendid. Um, I said I'd try to be about 40 minutes. I've already done that. So let's move on quickly. Tip of the week is um, that when you're preparing for your exams, it's you can end up doing a lot of creative writing based on tasks from past exams or from books or from lists of questions. And if you like that, that's fine. But sometimes it might get a little bit boring. And so one thing that you can work on doing is coming up with tasks on topics that you really enjoy writing about, but in the question style of an exam. So find a past exam question in the sort of style that you're practicing, but then come up with another question based on things that you enjoy. Simple. Find ways to practice your skills, but basing them on your interests. You can't always do that. Sometimes you have to write about well, write well about things that you aren't passionate about, but mix it into your practice and it will help to keep your writing engaging and fun. Top tip for the week. Okay, I'll just take a few of your questions, um, but not many because I'm absolutely roasting here. And uh, someone, at, someone's, someone at the beginning was saying that uh, they're wondering how long this would take. And I don't want to break my promise of sticking to about 40 minutes too egregiously. Egregiously, a word that you can look up. Um, Kartik says change cold to bitter. Uh, okay, I'll have a look because why not? Um, it can't be this cold because that's a noun. Um, a sprinkle of something bitter scratches. It can't be that because that would be a taste. Um, they were the only... Oh, it plunge, through the back, it plunges into bitter dampness. But then it's still implying that it's kind of something like a sort of, you know, an acid on my skin or something. Although I do use the word cold a few times, I think I'm going to stick with it. Um, that's my judgment. You might be right. Okay. What's the meaning of the word mottled? Um, patches of different colour. Um, but I think you'd often use mottled when the colours are relatively similar to each other, rather than where, the, rather than when they are really starkly different. I think. Uh, look up a better definition. Lydia, how long should you practice the eleven plus? Asks Lydia Adulati. Um, lovely to have you here. Um, well. So in a sense, you should always be practicing for it because the most important practice is getting really good at the skills you're studying at school because most of those, 
you know, our fundamental to the Open Plus exam. Uh, so, you know, even from when you're really teeny tiny, you can be making your, you know, your grammar really good, enjoying your writing, working on your core math skills, all that kind of thing. But when it comes to actually practicing 11 plus practice exams and that kind of thing, I would say that, you know, up to about a year and a half before your test is about the most that you should be doing it for. Um, any more than that, and you'll be really bored of it by the time the exam comes around and you won't be performing at your best. Um, that's my general view. It does depend on the person. But I would also say it's amazing what you can do in six months if that's all you've got left. So don't panic if you don't have a year and a half ahead of you. How do you stay calm in the exam? Uh, really good question. It really depends on you. The, the best way to stay calm is to have prepared well so that the exam isn't scary, so that you can think, well, I've done all this stuff before. I know what I'm doing. It's going to be fine. Uh, but there are other things that can help. For example, not just applying to one school because if you feel that everything is riding on this exam you'll be really stressed about it and you may not perform at your best if you think well if i don't do well in this one i've got another exam next saturday and maybe that one will work out you're going to feel more relaxed that can also help but also i think most fundamentally embrace yourself something i say all the time you need to be aware that if you are somebody who has prepared for the 11 plus like this you know you've watched video lessons on youtube You've, got, you've gone above and beyond. You are already the kind of person who is going to do really well at any school, even if it's, you know, the local comprehensive you would have ended up at anyway. Because the fundamental thing that affects your performance is not your school, it's you and what your attitude of mind is and how you work and how you think about your work. And you're already one of the people who's going to do really well in any school. And that's the best thing to calm you in an exam, just to recognise that it doesn't actually matter all that much. Yes, it would be wonderful if you get into your dream school, but your life is going to be fine anyway. Okay, um, one more question. Okay, absolutely shamelessly, I'm going to pick up on Krishna Singhal's question. Singhal? Singhal? Um, I apologise if I've mispronounced that. I reckon I've got Krishna right. That one's a little bit more straightforward. Um, hi, Robert. Since it is a key time, what are the best papers to do? And of course, I would encourage you to have a look at the RSL Educational website, um, at the papers in my books, and the papers available through 11 Plus Lifeline. Why would I be steering you to my own resources? Because I'm an absolutely shameless marketer. Well, there's more to it than that. Because what you get with my papers, whether it's in my books, or whether we're talking about um, um, the 11 Plus Lifeline papers that I offer, you get example answers for um, virtually everything and really detailed walkthroughs that explain exactly why I've done what I've done, how to structure an answer, how to market, how to get into the mind of an examiner. Not that you would want to be in the mind of such an awful person. Um, and yeah, I've designed them because in that way because I hope they'll help you to prepare really well for your exams. And I'm going to end with another shameless plug, but hopefully a useful one. It's where I started. You can send your work to me for completely free feedback um, if you aren't already a marking level member of 11 Plus Lifeline or of this YouTube channel. Um, so go to the 11 Plus Lifeline page. You can just Google it or there's a link down there in the video description. And uh, there's a banner at the top of the screen telling you to how to send me a short piece of work absolutely for free. Uh, and I give you feedback in little videos like this and in in voice comments like this saying um, you should put an apostrophe here because or what you've written here is absolutely beautiful here's how you could make it even better and so on and so forth anyway that's enough it's hot it's summer you've got better things to do uh, so go and do them it's been fantastic to have you here um, I'm afraid I don't have a cat handy in the room because I shut the door because it was so hot and I think they're on the balcony now um, which is a more sensible thing to do in the heat so I apologize for the lack of a cat but you got Grigri at the beginning so you haven't missed that entirely and if you joined late and missed Grigri you can always rewind all right people it's been fantastic to have you here and I look forward to seeing you next Tuesday evening as usual at six o'clock bye bye from me there's no cat but there's the alpaca <laughs> <laughs>